All right, folks. I'm here with the champ, James Buster Douglas. There's a new 30 for 30. And, you know, we all love 30 for 30. We all are big fans of that. 42 to 1, the movie about Buster Douglas and his defeat of Mike Tyson, which was totally unexpected and rocked the whole sports world. Buster Douglas is here, my brother. How are you, man? I'm doing great. Good doing to see great. you, man. Good to be seen. And the filmmaker is also here, Jeremy Shap. We all know Jeremy Shap. Jeremy, Jeremy, how are you, man? I'm great. It's great to be here. Thank ben, you for having me. Ben us. Hauser as well. Ben, how are you, man? I'm great. Thanks for having Congratulations, us. Congratulations uh, on this. Thank you. Um, Buster, how did this come about? Did these guys approach you or, or what happened? Yeah, they approached me about doing a uh, film and uh, I was more than accepting it, accepting it. You wanted that story told, huh? Definitely. What what was it about you guys that inspired you to deal with this particular event? Well, I think it's I think it's one of the great events ever in sports. Yeah. It's one of the most exciting sports events I've ever seen. Is this uh, the is this the biggest upset in the history of sports? I think so. Yeah, you do? I agree. I do. I agree. Okay, I do. good. I I really do. And it, it, it's and about... I love you for saying that because I'm a Hoya, and a lot of people say Villanova upset you. <laughs> so you guys are all right. We're gonna be friends forever. Keep no, going. It's not Villanova. It's not UMBC. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Uh, it's got nothing to do with that pink name. Um, this this is one of the great uh, upsets. Obviously, I I would say the greatest upset ever. But it's it's more. It's not just about the outcome. I mean, it, it it's an incredible story just based on the outcome of what happened uh, um, in opposition to the expectations, but it's also about Buster's incredibly rich story, which is unknown to most people. Yeah. People know that Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. They don't know anything else about the story, and, yeah. and, and it's all the unknown stuff that makes it even more remarkable. Were you there? I was not, I was in college, I was okay. 20 years old, and I was. I'm uh, sorry, I wasn't trying to make you sound old. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm not that old. Um, and I and I remember I'm I, I was in Hanover, New Hampshire that night covering a college hockey game, and I was trying to find a way to watch it. It was on regular HBO, and I couldn't find it. And somebody I had asked about, you know, finding HBO, came up to me later in the evening and said, "Hey, did you hear what happened?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> you know. And then my mother sent me a VHS tape of the fight. She had wow. recorded it for me. Wow. It, and and even getting it in the mail a few days later, watching it in college, it it's still it's it, I've watched it. I mean, I've really watched the entire fight probably yeah, hell, yeah. three dozen times, and every time, I feel like I'm reliving it as a fan because it's so stunning. And it wasn't just upset; it was a hell of a fight. It was watch. a hell of a fight. Ben, you weren't even born yet, right? No, I God. was. I was. I was. Uh, I was 14 years old, and I actually <laughs> didn't see the fight. We didn't have HBO either, and I was in church the next morning. And a good friend of mine, Tim Pollock, came across and said, "Hey, did you hear?" You're about Tyson. I said, when did he win? Right. He said, no, right. no, no. He lost to this guy, James Buster Douglas. And I said, I, I don't believe you. Yeah. Until I got home and turned on Sports Center and ESPN, you see all the all the coverage. It, it really is. I mean, we, we we talk about it a lot. Jeremy and I work on E60, and we we both firmly believe this is the greatest upset in sports. I mean, I really think it is. You agree with that, Buster? This is the biggest upset ever in the history of sports. Yep. I all right. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah. Who won the fight? You or your mom? I think we both did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. she came over like a week or so before she passed. Yeah. And was checking on me. Right. You know, and uh, seeing how, how I was mentally, seeing where I was. Because at the time I was going through some things with my wife. We were separated, you know, and it was just things going on in life, you know. And then she knew what I was coming up against because she talked to my dad about it, about this Mike Tyson she'd been hearing so much about. And he probably he confirmed everything for her, like, yes, but he has to be right to do what he has to do to beat this man. And so she came over to talk to me, and, uh, you know, she talked to me. After we talked, she felt confident that I was yeah. focused and ready to go. She was concerned. She was concerned, and she was all of us. And I believe us. she also said she um, saw your dad in you for the first time because your dad was a hell of a fighter right yeah yeah and you mentioned your dad after the fight but you know the story folks the film also talks about your relationship with your father mm -hmm. and how you had to um, fire your father from your corner right right because he wasn't getting along with everybody you know he was wasn't wasn't um, accepting their opinions or whatever you know and it made for an uncomfortable situation yeah, I was curious about that, what happened. Was it just that he wasn't getting along with anybody? But in terms of your actual training, 
Was he helpful to you or unhelpful oh, in terms of teaching you? Because he continued okay. to be, you know, hands on as far as you know advice. Yeah, I would talk to him every day after after the training and tell him what I did and how the training went, and we would discuss, you know, different scenarios and strategies in the fight. Right. You right. know, but as far as him coming to the gym and working, he made it uncomfortable for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Because they weren't comfortable around him because his yeah. intensity was just too much for him. Yeah. Sometimes <clears throat> the best athletes don't make the best coaches. Right. I think we can keep a couple, think of a couple of prominent names in that regard we won't mention right now. But <laughs> you all probably know what I'm talking about. But um, uh, but you still were very gracious in victory. You You talked about your mom and you talked about your dad. Right. And I think it was it was your brother who said that that your dad Bill Douglas also won that night, right? Because in in me winning, it was like I hand, he handed the ball off to me after his career, right? And I took it on into the end zone, right, right. You know, accomplishing the uh, Almighty Championship. You all uh, went back to Tokyo to do some filming. Is it something Ben still talked about? In, in Tokyo, is that something that's still a, a big topic of conversation? I think it was a really great trip. Um, and when we did get there, there were, there were a few people that recognized Buster. I mean, not, not yeah. a ton because he hasn't been there. It was his first time back in, in 28 years. But there were a couple people that went up and wanted his picture, wanted his autograph. But I'll tell you who really remembers it, the people at the Tokyo Dome. And, in fact, we interviewed one of the managers, one of the guys who actually runs the Tokyo Dome. And the first event they ever had, sports-wise, was Tony Tubbs versus Mike Tyson in 1988. This fight was two years later. But they say the one event that's happened at the Tokyo Dome that put them on the global map is when Buster Douglas beat Mike yeah, Tyson. They, they mention yeah. it all the time. They said it's the number one thing in the history I'm of that sh- building. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it was. Um was what was Mike about that night? Because it, in the film, it talks about a conversation or, or, or a, a debate about whether or not he was even focused. And clearly, you know, maybe even his ring wasn't. They didn't bring um, the inswell. The inswell. Um, did you notice anything? Did, did you, at any point, uh, smell blood buster? Did you see someone who wasn't really all there or not focused, as some in his corner was saying? Yeah, I would have to say that would have to be in the eighth round. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you knew he wasn't focused because you had made him unfocused, right? No, that's when uh, he knocked me down. Okay. I took a moment to start reflecting in the middle of the fight, like, yeah, what, what, what? What do you think about me now? Yeah. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> yeah. You know, so he was alive. Okay. So you think he was alive? Damn right he was alive because I was whacking him good and then I wanted to stop fighting for that brief moment, look him in the eye like, yeah, what do you think about me now? Uh-huh. And he caught me with a good punch, so he was there. He was focused. Oh, so you think he was there? He's damn right he was because what I was putting on Well, I was just was, asking. I won't try and take nothing away I from know, you. I know, I am just saying. <laughs> what I, what well, I you know, it, it, it is one of those interesting things though, right? Like people, for some reason, have this tendency to try to diminish Buster's achievement. Sure, sure. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing. Sure. But I'm saying like, it's like, well, they're always making excuses for Mike Tyson. It's like nobody was making excuses for Buster Douglas if he lost that fight. You know what I mean? It's like it's you know, Mike's the champion. Mike was in shape. And it's a testament, I think, to to Mike as a fighter that he withstood that beating for as long as he did. Mm-hmm. Um I mean Buster didn't just win that fight, as you know. Right. Buster kicked him around the yeah. ring for 10 yeah. rounds. Yeah. There is the moment in the eighth. And that makes Buster's victory even more spectacular. To get up off a canvas after getting knocked down by Mike Tyson. And, and him, seven yeah. minutes later, to be the heavyweight champion of the world, one minute later, that ninth round starts, and it is a war. You know, a war is on in that ninth round. It is, you know, in, in, in boxing terms, it's epic. And... um you know, so, you know, we as people, we try to find explanations for things that we can't explain. And so there's this tendency, I think, sometimes to say, well, Mike wasn't right or Mike wasn't this. And look, Mike's life was wild at the time. But, you know, if you're going to discount every champion who ever had a wild life at the time they were fighting, that would be a lot of them. Right, right. But, you know, you mentioned getting up from the canvas. canvas that caused you to reflect and be even tougher I guess right it kind of well, let you know that, what you know I, I do. knew that brief moment that I made a mistake and stopped yeah, fighting right, right that's when I hit the canvas like damn you know but I was still coherent knew where right. I was at and, and you knew you couldn't make any more mistakes right that mm-hmm. I had to stay on top of my game because that brief moment that brief lapse cost me a round yeah 
you know, it could have caused a fight had I not have been in great shape to take to absorb that punishment and mm -hmm. come back from it. But you were still coherent, as you said. Oh, most definitely. I knew exactly what was going on. I immediately picked up the count. I started to get right up, but I knew I had a couple more seconds to do a quick body check and then proceed to get on up. You never, you never feared Mike going in before this fight, did you? Man, I was always there. I was the number two heavyweight contender in the world. I mean, it was just that he was so dominant that if you weren't decapitating somebody, you, you, nobody recognized you. I mean, I was beating some quality guys to get in that position to fight Mike. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I was walking down the street and Don King pulled up in the car and said, you want to shout at the heavyweight title? Because you had a big win the night, I believe, he beat Spinks. Spinks. Right. Is that right? Who was that? You beat, who I forgot? Mike Williams. Mike Williams, okay. Dropped him with jabs. Right, right. You know, and then they made an excuse for that. You know, here it was, Mike was coming into the fight like, well, folks, this is uh, Buster Dulles, but this is about the last you'll see him because Mike Williams is the guy featured tonight. Right, right. And then at the end of the fight, it was like, well, I guess we won't see the last of Buster Douglas. But that was my whole career, fighting, fighting uphill battle. How did you keep Buster from, you know, your mom's death really taking you out? Obviously, you were very, very close to your mom. How did you keep that? From because I'm did you ever think about postponing the fight? I mean, that never, had to be tough, never, never because I knew she wouldn't. That's the last thing she would have wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. You know, she raised me to be a strong individual, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I knew that would have hurt her even more knowing that my her passing left me feeling unable to continue, you know, accomplishing one of my childhood dreams of becoming a heavyweight champion of the world. And I knew that's what she wanted me to do. is to continue on, because she came over a week before she passed over to the house to check on me. You know, like I said, I was going through some things in my household, and she wanted to see where I was at in my training and, mm -hmm. and how I was doing mentally. And then after she, after she left, we had our discussion, and she left, she was telling everybody that I was going to win. Mm -hmm. Telling her girlfriend, mm -hmm. he's going to be all right. He's yeah, going to be all right. She was, she was bragging on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how are you now, man? What's what's going on in Buster Douglas's life now? Well, you know, uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm working in, uh, got a boxing gym in Columbus, working with the city okay. of Columbus. I'm working with amateur kids. Good. Actually, the same program I came under. Okay. You know, and uh, I'm the coach now. I'm my father because he was All the right. head coach back then. You anything like him as a coach or are you a little different? No, nah, I'm a little different. You're not little, as intense. Little, <laughs> yeah, a little relaxed. <laughs> yeah. I have my moments, though. <laughs> okay, you know. I know that's right. I but know that's right. For the most part, it's, it's, you know, relaxed setting and, uh, you know, just having fun. Miss them little guys when I'm not around them. I know, you know that's on right. The weekends and stuff, but we have a good time, man. And, and I know they the look up thing. to you. Yeah. I know they look up to you too. Mm -hmm. Um, you miss being in the ring yourself. Is that the muscle memory come back? You think about you miss well, those days. You know, I, I have my moments. You know, I hit the bag or something. Okay. Get the two rounds out, I'll be all right. Okay. You know? Okay. But uh, I mean, if you part, want, I mean, so you wouldn't mind. So let me just let you know. There's a conversation now about me and, you know, Jerry Coon is here at Sirius XM. <laughs> we think about getting in the ring for charity. Would you want to get in the ring with me, or would that be too intimidating for you? That could be a little intimidating right now. I heard okay. about you. You know, yeah. I, did, I did some studies. You, did, so you went on the internet yeah, and looked. Yeah, yeah, I looked at you. That might be another, that yeah, might be another 30, 30 for 30. <laughs> Y'all going to have another 30 for 30. I, 30. What if I, if I told you? If I knock out Buster Douglas, what? Yeah. I, what if I told you Buster Douglas came back to fight again? I've seen Jerry at those charity events, yeah. and people punch him and punch him, and he holds back, and yeah. then eventually they kind of force him into a position <laughs> to throw one punch, and they don't come at him again. I think I, I, we've been, you know, we talk a lot of stuff, right? I think I can knock Jerry out. Right. I don't right. think I can knock him out. <laughs> yeah, well, Jerry. brother, uh, congratulations. You look great, man. Thanks, man. I feel good. You do? Yeah, I feel good. I like working with those kids, man. It's, it brings yeah. joy to my life, man. Yeah. It warms my heart. Well, that's, and that's ultimately what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So, folks, uh, Tuesday, December 11th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Um, and um, we invite you all to watch 42 to 1. What's next for the filmmakers? You all working on any other projects? I think we're both going to take some time off, huh? It's a little break. A little, <laughs> little break. I mean, I, I still have my day job, you know, uh, on E60, so I'm working on yeah. a lot of pieces, uh, you know, but... Uh, um, Maybe maybe take a couple of weeks off before we dive in. Before you dive back into something else. E60, that's what's next for us. That's right. Yeah. Well, no, this is great, folks. And uh, I've seen the film already. Uh, all of you, I know, are going to enjoy it. And bring back some some memories uh, as well, some very uh, fond memories, because we, I think we all 
uh, kind of remember and know where we were. Mm -hmm. And even like you guys, even if you weren't in front of the fight, you heard about it. I mean, just, and when you heard about it, everything just stopped. You're like, what? You know, what happened? So, uh, but, and then watching it again, though, it reminded me of just what how good a fight it was. I mean, y'all were getting down. I mean, that was a fight, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of fights now, everybody's just hugged up, but you all were, were fighting. There wasn't a whole lot of that. So, uh, folks, do check out 42 to 1, 30 for 30 documentary. Good to see you, Buster Douglas. Thank you, man. It's good ben to be and here. Jeremy, good to see you guys, too. Congratulations on this film. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. The champ is here. We'll be back. This is MIP.